if money and time is not a problem, what will you be doing today? Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I find myself to be quite a fortunate person to be able to have found my purpose and my passion in life by the age of 30. I know 30 is not a really young age, but at the same time, no, you know what? I actually think that 30 is very, very young. Um, But what I wanted to say is that I know a lot of people only find their passion or their purpose in life in their 40s because your 20s and 30s could be the time when you are actually going through life and experiencing life in different ways. And for some people, they take a shorter route to find the answer. But for some people, it might take a few rounds of learning and experiencing and reflecting to actually figure out what they want. So I consider myself to be fortunate in that area. And in fact, that's kind of why I wanted to hop on to talk about this today, because it often comes up in conversations with my friends or my colleagues that not everyone has already figured out what they want in their life by now. And because of that, I realize that not everyone is built like me. Not everyone is really into goal setting because they have a purpose. A lot of people just get by life. Like they don't really have purpose. They don't really know what's next for them or what they actually want in life. And I'm not saying that it's a problem. I actually think that it's perfectly fine. And I wish that I can have a life like that. But I think I'm just built very differently. But having said that, perhaps sometimes you need a little bit of push to just get yourself out of your comfort zone, to challenge yourself for growth. So I want to share my experience or my stories about how I came across figuring out what my passion and my purpose is. Like, I don't exactly know how I did it or how can I teach you like step by step to do it. But I figured that by sharing my story, there might be a thing or two that you might be able to learn from it and maybe use that and apply that into your life and see if you are able to find your answers. So let's kickstart by talking about purpose first. I would say that I figured out what my purpose is in life in 2017. And that would be seven years ago, which means that I'm around 23, 24 years old. Yeah, that's about right because that was right after the biggest major depressive episode that I was experiencing and I mean that was kind of the reason that I figured it out too so yeah by 23 years old I actually already knew what I was called to do or what I am still called to do and it's my purpose of life so the story began with me going through depression for the third time in my life within three years with depression it's pretty straightforward that you become really hopeless and you don't really have purpose and you just kind of want to get by life. And for some people, they might want to, they might feel like their life is no longer worth living and they feel like it's time to go. And so I've been through a phase of my life where I actually went through the darkest of the dark. And coming out of it when I was on antidepressants and also going through a therapist, I remember coming out of taking antidepressant where the SSRIs were just helping me to elevate my mood to be a more stable level. And, you know, I just felt a little bit lighter in my body, in my heart, in my head. I felt lighter as a person. But I realized that 
there's only that much that the drug can help me in terms of my mood. And it is still up to me to figure my purpose in life. And that was when I started consuming more and more like self-help content, self-improvement stuff, just to learn and see what can I do? Like, what is the meaning of life? What is it that I want to go through in my life? And that was also a season that I would say I learned to grow closer to God. So I know religion is a very sensitive topic. And sometimes I I get afraid to talk about religion online because I'm worried that I'm not a good representation of a certain religion and stuff like that. So I'm very cautious about talking about it. But I do believe in God, okay? So that's all that I want to say. I believe in God. And I think during that season when I was in the lowest of the lows, I really went inwards and I asked myself like if I were to live my life as if God is leading the life for me what is the decision that I would have made if God has made that decision for me so it's a process of really going inwards and trying to put myself in a position of God or Jesus the way that I know it through the Bible and At that point, I was actually in a crossroad in my life. I was deciding whether to move back to Canada where I already have secured a three-year work permit to work there and experience life over there or do I stay back in Malaysia because, I mean, there's a deadline to the work permit and there's a lot going on in here. And I remember at that point... I realized that the reason that I went through this entire depression experience, the reason that I went through post-traumatic stress disorder, the reason that I had suicidal thoughts, the reason that I went through a really, really traumatic incident in my life was to lead me to be the voice of those who are struggling with the same issues or similar issues. And I, I don't know. This thought just came to me and it just makes sense because as I knew it, I have always been someone who is very good at expressing myself, whether it's through my words when I was blogging or when I was making videos online while I was vlogging and while, you know, just posting on Instagram stories and stuff like that, I've always been really authentic. I feel comfortable sharing. And even on a one-to-one basis, like I do feel like I'm quite approachable and I become friends with people and I make them feel comfortable very quickly into the conversations. So I know this has all been like my, my strength and my power and my gifts in life. And when I put one and one together, I just feel like, yep, that completely makes sense. And then coming back to me having to make a decision at that point of my life, right? I decided that I need to measure how would the impact be in both countries if I were to do what I'm supposed to do in my life, which is to be the voice for those who are struggling mentally. And then I put myself in Canada and I look into what I know about the place and about the mental health awareness. And I figured that Canada is a developed country and it is definitely more advanced in terms of their awareness about mental health illness and the resources that are available for those who are struggling. And then I put myself back to Malaysia. I remember when I first had more severe Um, depression symptoms I was afraid to go get help because the stigma is still around and I was afraid of the expensive cost I didn't even know what were my resources over here in Malaysia so then I thought about it I felt like Malaysia is a place where if I were to stay and if I were to do what I'm called to do in my life then the impact would be bigger And that's how I made a very, very huge decision in 2017 
where I decided to stay back in Malaysia. So I believe my life would have been really, really, really different if back then I was to just insist and, you know, go back to Canada. I think either way, my life would turn out well. But I felt like this was the path that was called for me in this season of my life. If I were to dissect my experience of how I figured my life's purpose, I would say that the first thing that has led me to finding this answer is because I experience pain in life. And I'm not telling you to go search for pain on purpose in life, but what I'm trying to tell you is to just go live life, go experience life, take risks to do things that you've always wanted to do but you are afraid of. Because if you are always going to play safe, you are not going to experience life to the fullest. But having said that, you have to be also aware that when you live your life to the fullest, when you take on challenges or just things that are different from what it is right now, there are bound to be some mistakes or some pain that you are going to experience but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing or that your life is just going to end like that that is just a part of the journey that you have to accept um, as your learning experience to help you to grow and figure out your life as you go so that's the first thing because I felt like I went through a really traumatic incident um I know every time I say traumatic incident, it feels really vague, but I also feel like I'm not ready to share about it. But I don't want to keep you curious. I just want to say that I went through a sexual assault, okay, at the age of 21, and that has affected a lot of things. But if I were to turn back time, would I have changed anything that happened? The answer is no. Because if it's not for whatever happened, and whatever happened was part of my decisions was part of the consequences of my actions I don't blame myself for what happened but I also accept that my lifestyle or my choice of decision at that point has led it has led me to that position and but through it I took up some big lessons in life and I find that if it's not for the incident I wouldn't be the stronger and wiser and more understanding person that I am today. So that's the first part, actually go and experience life. And the second part would be to really tune in. And I want to say talk to God, but if you don't believe in God, then maybe just tune in and connect with the universe or the source or whatever it is that you believe that has created this life for you. I think tuning in is really a very powerful thing that you can do if you can figure out how to do it. I am not a spiritual person. I'm not a guru or what sort. And how I really learned to get there was through a lot of reading and also just tuning in okay that is not helpful at all but I I just wanted to emphasize on that because going into like finding your passion in life and for me I had figured out that what I'm going to do for the rest of my life is to create content like this is something that I know I'm going to do for my lifetime so how I was able to figure out this passion of mine is through reflecting on my life and asking myself a lot of questions along the way. So one of the questions that I actually ask myself is, if money and time is not a problem, what will you be doing today? And for me, when I close my eyes and think about it, the vision that I had is a very relaxed version of myself who is immersed in a beach home that has big windows and a lot of direct sunlight. And I am doing something that is creatively inspired. Like I could be writing a book, I could be still creating vlogs or painting a canvas 
Like I want to be creating because that is something that I really enjoy doing. And I want to feel free knowing that financially I'm also in a space that I know I have enough to live the life that I want. So I'm not looking for huge luxury or whatnot. I already know that this is the life that I want. Just by visualizing my life like right now, if money and time is not a problem, that's actually what I see. And so that's a very good way to maybe figure out what exactly you want to be doing for the rest of your life. Another question that you can also ask yourself is, what do I enjoy doing so much that even when the time passes, I don't realize it? So I've been hearing a lot about working in the flow. And I was trying to figure out what the flow is when I was actually, I think, editing one of the reels that I just randomly had an idea on that day. It was a long day where I actually got back from work and only arrived home at 8 p.m. And I was lying on my couch feeling so tired, but I got inspired to create a reel. And I just went on finding a video, finding the right sound and putting together the words and churn out the content. And I remember by then, by the time that everything was done, maybe it was 10 p.m. And I was already so tired. But I am happy that I did that. Like I, I just find myself to be in the flow whenever I get into the process of creating a content just to put out on social media. So this is something that I would do voluntarily, even if no one is telling me to do it. I'm willing to do it again and again, even if I'm not paid to do it. And that's when I realized that, wow, I really enjoy doing this thing. So yeah, like I feel like as Asians, we were not raised to really question things or figure out what exactly it is that we want in our lives. A lot of us, our Asian parents, they force their own beliefs into our lives. They say that we have to study hard and get good grades and get into good universities and become a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. And, you know, you graduate first class and you get married and then you buy a house and then you get a children so I mean there is this certain values that our Asian parents are already very used to believing in and because of the collective culture we are just expected to do things collectively and be the same honor respect integrity is a very important value for the Asian culture growing up like attending tuition and taking piano lessons and swimming lessons and art classes are really common things that Asian parents would sign us up for. And that's where we spend all of our times. So we don't really have time to go have fun or do things that are out of our hobby and not because we are forced to do and to figure out what we like to do. So I am quite fortunate that my parents was not like helicopter parents Although they do encourage me to study hard, they never really push too many things on me. And so I think I've always had the freedom to do things that I like. And I have to give it to my elder sisters to really, you know, challenge my parents so that I can do the things that I want right now. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm a very lucky youngest kid among my siblings. So when I was growing up, my parents were never too strict about me using the internet. So by the age of eight years old, I actually started chatting with strangers on MIRC, which is a really, really old chatting server. And I started blogging by the age of 13 years old. So I was writing about my life and updating about stuff and sharing about my opinions at a live space blog and then it went on to blogspot and blogging was something that I was doing very very frequently outside of school in my high school days and actually in fact no not just high school it actually went all the way through university because I had that blog for 10 years 
And it went from something like a teenage rent space to actually a space where I update about my life and my lifestyle. And I eventually got into like lifestyle blogging where I was talking about healthy lifestyles and stuff like that. So I remember that I really enjoyed just opening up my computer and thinking about the content that I want to write today and I plan towards it. By the time that I took blogging seriously as like a side hustle during university, I actually invested in a good camera and I would plan photographs and I would like actually arrange nice photos to be taken to really share and put out the content out there. And when blogging started to be less popular, I went on to YouTube. And I remember I was doing YouTube for a year without having a clear direction. I was just putting out vlogs or like random topics that I talk about and learning to edit as I was doing it. I was doing YouTube for a year without getting paid and I was making weekly episodes on top of a full-time job. Long story short is that I have spent a huge chunk of my life doing this thing, really doing it just because I want to do it. So I guess for me, I was able to figure out my passion at a very young age because number one, my parents allowed me to do the things that I want to do without questioning too much, which is why I was able to start blogging at a young age and I just went on and on. And number two, I realized that it is something that I can do in the zone and I can do it for many hours. Like I can edit videos up till 12.30 a.m. and not realizing that it's already past midnight. And the last thing is when I visualize the life that I have, if money and time is not a limitation, I would still be creating content. So these were like the three question-ish that I was able to ask myself and figure out what my passion is in life. And there you go. Those were kind of like my experiences and how I think I was able to figure out my life's purpose and passion at a very young age. I know these are really introspective stuff. And if you are someone who is not used to asking yourself questions, I think journaling would be a very good place to get started. In fact, why not? I will create a Notion template that consists of prompts and questions that allows you to think about what is your purpose and passion in life. I will share the link to the Notion in the show notes or the description box. So be sure to click on it. And if you really enjoyed this episode and you find that this has been helpful for you, be sure to share it with a friend that you think it might be helpful for. And also, please give it a thumbs up or give it a five-star rating or drop me a comment and tell me what you think about this episode. I really appreciate you for sticking in and I wish that you would be able to figure your purpose and your passion in life soon. I will see you in my next episode.